Thank you, Terry. And uh, thank you all for inviting me to share my observations about the uh, revisit program to Korea and the Korean War. I understand I'm allotted 25 minutes. And so if I try, I'll try to finish <clears throat> before you all hit for the exits. <laughs> Terry mentioned the introduction. I'm part of a veterans group. We visit local high schools and uh, share our experiences. I believe that future generations really should understand why we got involved in the Korean Civil War and uh, what was accomplished. As a matter of fact, I think there's a lot of adults <laughs> who are also a bit hazy about that war. <laughs> as a member of a recent group of veterans visiting South Korea, I have to tell you we were treated with so much respect and courtesy, it was something was embarrassing. The entire cost of the week's visit including hotel, food, tours, etc., is paid by our host, the Republic of South Korea. It was amazing, amazing reception we had. Now, the first part of my presentation will be my impressions of today's Korea. The second uh, will be my observations about the war and little about, a little bit about my personal experience in that war. You all have received handouts on your tables which list every battle during the war and a map of the Korean Peninsula. I'll refer to the handouts on the map during my presentation to help explain why the war was so important to today's South Koreans. After the armistice was signed, July 1927, 1953, my Jeep driver and I drove into Seoul. All I could see was a city of ashes and smoke. I don't think I saw a building over three or four stories tall. Here's a photo of Seoul back then. You can tell this illustrates the destruction of Seoul after the city changed hands four times. First by the North Koreans, then by the Chinese, and twice by the UN forces. And now the next photo you'll see from my hotel room with my smartphone. I took a photo of the Seoul skyline. You can see the contrast between 1953 in 2013, as we go along here. Now, next morning, I went to the city center. You can see that a large, a large poster right in the middle of city center thanking the United Nations and Americans for their contribution. Next to our hotel was a construction of a building of a, going to be 123 stories. When it's completed in 2015, it'll be the second tallest building in the world. When the war ended, it would have been just impossible to imagine a vibrant city with skyscrapers and a country strong with a strong economic base. The estimates would take, back then, would take over 100 years to rebuild South Korea back to pre-war levels, standards, but with financial help from the United States and other countries, it only took 60 years. This may come as a surprise to you, but South Korea is 10 years ahead of the United States and most other countries in the world in terms of technology and a real, and a real organized system. For example, you'll, the Incheon Airport where we landed is the rank number one in the world as the most efficient airport in the world. 80% of Incheon, when the war ended, was it, by the time the war ended, was destroyed. 80% was destroyed. And today it's ranked second in terms a growth potential among world cities. Another example is when the war ended, South Korea only had one bridge still intact. Today, they have 23 bridges with marvelous architecture. You know, we have a problem building one bridge between all Oregon and Washington. <laughs> <laughs> the Korean War is called the Forgotten War because the same was between World War II and the controversies of the Vietnam War. I suggest it will also be known as the bloodiest war in the 20th century. 40,000 Americans died, and 104,000 were wounded in the most horrific combat and weather conditions in the history of warfare. South Korea fared, army fared even worse than others, than a huge casualty in the South Korean army. There were somewhere between three and four million South Korean civilians who died, and 300,000 war widows, 100,000 orphans as a result of that war. On the handout, I'd like to call your attention to page six, 
comments by Eric Severide 60 years ago. I reflected on his observations. I was told that I was needed as a Ford observer. I accepted with a sense of honor and patriotism. Uh, and finally, let me show. When I go to the high schools, I always like to show before and after. Here, here's yours truly, graduating from OCS. Here's the same guy after a tour of duty in Korea. A, ch a change of demeanor, as you will know. <laughs> we prevented North Korea from occupying South Korea. Today, South Korea is free. North Korea's people are starving. God bless America, and thank you very much. <laughs>